a gnarly book. Hi everybody, Leafy Concern here. Welcome to another, at least partially, outdoor edition of these videos. Uh, for I have just finished reading Crime and Punishment by Fyodor Dostoevsky in a new translation by, what's his name again? What's his name again? What's the guy's name, right? Oliver Reddy, yeah. Now really, here's the problem I often have. I never ever read books of length. And when I do, I read them in my typical cheap, skimming, uh, minimal amount of effort required to glean energy from the book way. What this ends up meaning is that I very rarely feel like I understand the plots of novels I read. This is why I've long kind of assumed I prefer a surreal poetic kind of things to narrative things, just from my whole basically adult reading life, because I knew I had this, uh, this weakness. The upshot of this is that after I finish reading something long like this, my confidence that I can say anything about the significance of the plot uh, without misrepresenting the book to you is very low. Very low confidence that I can do that. But first, a look at the book. It's a Penguin Classics Deluxe Edition. The first one of these I've read since the end of the affair, I think. Um, which didn't even feel like one because typically I assume these deluxe editions have these illustrated covers that look very graphic and sort of uh, irreverent, honestly, most of the time. Uh, the one I, the earliest one of these I remember reading was the One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest uh, book uh, that's illustrated by Joe, by Joe Sacco on the on these French flaps. I don't remember which long read it was, but I had just finished a long read of something, and I was looking for another one when this book came along. Um, I was, well, really a gift card came along. A relative of mine gave me a Barnes & Noble gift card, and I thought, well, I might as well order something cool. So I ordered uh, Crime and Punishment. And it came and it was very neat and there was no concavity here and there was no um, there was no packing tape there. I think longtime viewers of the channel, uh, eternal viewers of the channel, will understand that I frequently tear books there, I think, because of with what the force with which I hold them open like this. Um, and I often need to repair them down there on the corner. I also often need to repair well, I, I found that I very often needed to repair this book on this back flap where Sonia is saying, cross yourself and pray at least this once. You can see I've noted, I've noted the, the page on which she says that. Um, I had to fix this a couple times, I think. Let's get the gleam of that packing tape, please. You can imagine how funny I look out in public groping at my book to get this to show. Yeah, but you can kind of see the packing tape, maybe. Maybe I did a really good job of repairing. You know, up until the time I had the idea to buy this book, my reading of Dostoevsky was kind of um, limited. I had read Notes from Underground and liked it twice. Um, I'd started Brothers Karamazov and read the first 200 or so pages, enough to know that I liked it, but uh, enough to know that finishing the book would be an amount of work I wasn't yet mature enough to, to make. An amount of work I wasn't mature enough yet to, to, to offer to offer myself up to. And my best English teacher in high school used to say, I mean, not my best, but the one I think about honestly the most, said that his Russian, quote unquote, was Dostoevsky, not Tolstoy, which always made me think that there was something special lurking in Dostoevsky, even though it didn't seem so to me as a young person, as a younger person, because I couldn't tell what there was in the style that really recommended him. I hope that my ear is more sensitive now to the, the, the good things about Dostoevsky's style. Of course, I don't really know Dostoevsky's style, but I do know the style of this translation. When I started reading the book, I had high hopes that the translation would be colloquial enough that I would forget that I was reading a Russian long novel in translation. Uh, I didn't end up having that impression. By the end of the novel, I was kind of basically feeling like I was moving through a Constance Garnet book again. I'd just like to say that this is a document of a first read of this book. As I said before, I don't really feel confident talking about the significance of the plot. 
outside of just saying that Sonia is important and Sonia's acts of love seem to be the upshot of the book, is what I'll say. Other than that, I, I really don't feel confident to say that. Maybe after like a second or third read. This is really an account of a first read. So yeah, anyway, I got the book um, from Barnes & Noble. Um, I started reading it like on the plane uh, at the end of February, early March. And it, I just finished it today. Um, which is one of the last days in June, so it's been like a few months. And basically what would happen would be that I would read the book in kind of 50 to 100 page chunks and then take long breaks. And I assume at this point that that was because of like the content of the book, that, that, that it's such an arduous uh, journey, it's so anguished, it's so tortured. Um, the, the really, it feels like there's this, there's kind of a wall of the eye of the storm quality to it where the bookends of the book are really lucid, entertaining, full of quotable moments and, um, and so forth. And then the middle is kind of a giant muddle, maybe just, of course, caveat, maybe just due to my, my, my low reading ability. Um, like the, the middle is, feels more like a giant muddle of like kind of unpleasant, but perhaps interesting subplots and uh, nightmares, honestly. Very vivid nightmares. And during the time of reading this, I, I think I read a little bit of poetry and poetry criticism and was also working on that Bill Evans book that I just did. If a video you're going about. to read this book, I think you should make sure to enjoy the, the, the front and the back of it. Really make sure you um, you enjoy the beginning and really make sure you savor the end. And also try to maybe read with a friend so that the the unpleasantness of the plot or kind of the, uh, the oppressive um, atmosphere of guilt in the book doesn't like sway you from reading it, I guess. I mean, I was gonna film the screen, you know, like that, you know that, Philip Roth video where he says, if you haven't read a novel in two weeks, you haven't read the novel. Well, I haven't read this novel then. Um, and if I think if you, st if you want to stand a chance of having read the novel um, and really also uh, given yourself to the experience of it, it might be best to read it with a friend, it might be best to really uh, relish that first bit so that you kind of pay your way. I mean, even though the first bit is a murder, you know, spoiler alert, but I'm really struggling to know what else to say about this book, even though this video is really long already. One thing about the book is that the note of its ending is really specific. It's not really clear whether it's a happy ending. I mean, I think it is clear that there are notes of happiness, but really outside of the question of happy or sad endings, uh, the, the ending, and I'm just kind of talking randomly now, is very specific to the book, and I don't think I've ever felt an ending like this. I rarely feel endings to books like this at all because I rarely get to the end of books this long. I think what I'll take away from this book is the loving, the way, the way, the way Sonia loves Raskolnikov, and also the way the nightmare sequences feel. I'll also take away with it, take away from it, um, this the, the the this idea that the character, while while the character is changing, they can seem to really cling harder and harder to the the parts that they're changing away from. Meaning, if they have a kind of uh, belief system that allows them to to do some horrible thing in Act One, and you sense that the book is going to be about them traveling from that spot to another spot where they no longer wish to kill in that way, um, then you kind of expect that there's going to be this like linear, very clear progression from point A to point B. And I think the book does a good job of, I think what Dostoevsky knows well is that people deny and deny and, and wrestle and rage a lot before they um, ever um, get to the moral place they're kind of going to. I sort of don't want to spoil too much more of the book. I don't want to spoil the cool specific places where various monologues and subplots have their climaxes. Um, and I, 
don't want to say things that'll suggest that any of those subplots in the middle are like not interesting. I, I do recommend reading the book and I recommend reading it at a stretch. And I think maybe I should end by saying- and Now I'd say I feel prepared to read the thing the whole way through, um, read it properly. Now that there are no spoilers and now that I know certain details about the ending that can kind of give context to the earlier parts of the book, I think that reading it all the way through is going to be a lot easier the second time around. It's a gnarly book. <laughs>